So good morning. It's Thursday morning, it's early and we're off hiking. I set my alarm for quarter past seven because I want to get a nice early start and woke up at 6am as you do. And then I laid there for a little bit and thought well I'm obviously not going to go back to sleep for another hour. <clears throat> I'm going to get up. So I did. And it's now half past seven and I'm ready to go. You've got to do these things, haven't you? So I'm just having a look at my route. Where does it want to take me? Now, this morning, I'm not recording my route for the very simple reason that I am going back to the last car park I was at, which is Stand Edge Cutting. But what I'm going to do is take the, the Pennine Trail going the other way. So you've already seen that and if you want to be reminded go back to my last my last hike and rewatch it because I think it'd be a bit cheeky to add it here. So instead I'm going to talk to you for a bit and then I will see you at the other end. Um, so yes, so we are driving out the same route as before distracted this morning it's too early although saying that I love getting up early so first thing this morning I got a notification to say that those little ballet pump shoes that I'd bought have arrived at the impost lockers so I nipped across the road to get those before I left and they're perfect And it was lovely out. That was about seven o'clock when I did that. And oh my goodness, I love being out early. Now, since I went out and did that, things have got a bit busier. I see kids in school uniforms already out. There are people taking their kids to nursery because they have other places to be. The traffic's building up. But although it's pretty sunny, the temperature is relatively cool. I think it's going to be about 16 out on the moor this morning. It's going to climb to about 20 by lunchtime and then in the afternoon by about 3, 4 o'clock it's going to be about 22, 23 degrees which is fine because normally I would be heading home or be home between 2 and 3 o'clock. So that's really good because <clears throat> that means I'll be back before it gets too warm. I'm really excited about getting on this hike. I was so excited about getting out on this today because the weather had not been looking that promising and I've started to get to that point where if I don't get out and do a hike every week I start to feel a bit mm. <laughs> so You can understand why people who are into sports get a bit anxious when they can't get out and do the sports. It all makes sense, I get that. I really like this element of freedom that I can just get in the car and go. And that's one of the many reasons that I couldn't do a full time 9 to 5 because I'd never get out and do stuff like this. I just couldn't. How would you do it? I never go out and do stuff like this at the weekends because of course that's when everyone else is out. And one of the main points of doing this is that there are as few people as possible out there. So today I am, as I said, going back to the Stand Edge Cutting Car Park, but I am walking the other direction which means I'll be popping up over the main road 
and often up into the hills. <clears throat> And if I stick to the main roads, it'll take me straight up, straight up to the next car park. So one stretch of the Pennine Way, it'll take me straight up to that. And then when I next hike, I'll drive to that car park and do the next stage. However, I've had a good old look at the map. And I'm going to try and take a detour because there are a couple of reservoirs that I would like to see and walk around. But if I took the straight route, I'd go up to that car park and then I'd have to walk all the way down the main road to get to them. But there seems to be a tributary of the Pennine Way that looks like a walked trail, although Google Maps doesn't show it. You can see it on the satellite view, but it won't track it um, when you're planning your walking trails. But it looks like a track, and it goes off at a dog leg and heads towards those reservoirs and picks up another section of the Pennine Trail further down, or like the walking route further down, that the map can see. So I'm gonna have a look at that. Um, and then if that doesn't work, I'll just, I'll just walk up, um, up to the car park and then obviously I've got to get back again. Now what I've done, because, um, I, particularly with this route, because I'm going off piste, so to speak, I can't track the routes. I am going to, well, I have downloaded an old step counter that I used to use. Um, called pedometer because I want to get an accurate mileage on this and I won't get that if I'm trying to track the route on Google Maps I think it also maps my route so that I'll have a route map to show you but if not I'll just draw it on the map <clears throat> I've done a section of the map where I have had to physically draw it on myself and I've stuck that on my phone as a reminder for where I need to turn, but I should be okay. Now, I think this is gonna be another roughly five mile hike, but I'm not entirely sure what happens once I get to that left turn. So I may end up doing more than five miles, but I'm up for it. I've got my snacks. I've got myself a sugary drink today, so I've got a little bit of sugar in my system because I don't normally take anything sweet. Um, and I've got plenty of water. And I'm feeling fit and ready. I slept well, I've had breakfast. I did have my morning coffee because why not? And yeah, off we go. I love taking these little routes out. You wouldn't normally just wander around the streets like this driving around. But when you're going places that you don't normally go to, you get to drive through these little northern towns and villages. You can see all the uh, the old warehouses and the mill buildings that are being either used for similar purposes or have been repurposed into flats and stuff like that. I see all these intriguing little areas. After this, I have another four Pennine Trail based hikes to do. And several people have said to me that I should go and do the Hebden Bridge area. Um, it's a bit further out for me, it's about an hour's drive or thereabouts. <coughs> and it's not an area I know or am um, terribly familiar with or have a particular desire to go to but you know eventually I'm going to run out of Pennine Trail that I can do. I'm not interested particularly in going to the lower end of the Pennine Trail which is the uh, Crowden and Edale section because that's where everybody goes. The parking is nightmarish and 
and it's far more touristy. I've driven down that way before and the parking is a nightmare. So, I'm enjoying sticking to the top area where the parking is free and where there are less people. And I really like that very flat moorland expanse of countryside. And I'm happy to stick to that because it's going to last me quite a while. But I was watching a, or I came across by accident, there's a, a, a short, I think it's a four part series on BBC Four or something called The Pennine, I think it's called The Pennine Way and it's these chat walking sections of the Pennine Way and it's, the, and it's the South Pennine Way he was doing and he was at Hepton Stall which is kind of around the Hebden Bridge area and I thought oh that's that's the area I want to do or has been recommended to me so that's given me a very brief but interesting overview of of it and I've kind of plotted a route that I can see that goes from Hepton Stall which looks like a really pretty little village with no parking restrictions and gets quite a lot of hikers because it's on the main South Pennine Trail and I should be able to plot some sort of trail to Studley Pike which is one of those little monuments that are up in the middle of the middle of the moorlands. Um, I, I've kind of looked at it but not got into it in great detail but once I've run out of Pennine Trail or at least the ones I've planned I think that might be um, a good way to go because I do like the Yorkshire Dales and the Yorkshire Moors. It's a little bit further out and I'm still being cautious about spending too much money on petrol etc but at some point if I'm going to continue hiking every week I'm going to have to branch out because I'm going to run out of places to go that are relatively tourist free that I can get to without paying parking fees etc etc um, I am sure that lots of you watching will have recommendations and particularly if you know trail routes that have some of those free Pennine Trail car parks on them they're the ones I like they're quiet they're trouble free they always have plenty of parking and that's how I like it <laughs> as simple as that I am NOT going to pay for parking to go and walk in the hills it's ridiculous so nothing RSPB nothing National Trust, nothing English Heritage because they all charge for their um, for their parking and you know I'm just at that point where I'm just comfortable enough about my income where I can afford to you know burn a little bit more petrol than normal because these are not particularly long routes you know this one's taken me 40 minutes today but it's only I don't know what is it about 13 miles or something like that it really depends on how slow the traffic is I don't mind the length of time it's the length of the journey in terms of petrol usage because I'm just just trying to be a little bit careful and whilst I still have all these hikes pretty much on my doorstep I'm going to stick with it because having a place to aim for is quite good that's why I plot points it's not a case of just like wandering around it's all oh, up there's a there's a point I can aim for from here where does that go and then it's interesting to find out a little bit about its history I'm not very really good at just sticking a pin in the map and going oh I'll just go there 
I like to know where I'm going and normally like when I go on my car camping trips and things like that I am normally going for genealogy so I'll go to places where ancestors lived and where I can see places and explore graveyards and things like that and see if I can find ancestors all that sort of thing so coming out here and doing this which is really an area that my family are connected to um, is a little bit outside my usual box Mossley actually it's quite a pretty looking little town I think because when I think of Mossley for some reason in my head I think of Moss Side which is not the same place at all my poor little brain struggles but Mossley is quite pretty it's very traditional for the area the stone cottages and little high street little shops so today I'm testing out the hiking boots for real I have brought my trainers just in case I run into problems because these hiking boots are they look shape wise they look almost exactly the same as my previous ones which have fallen apart but these ones are waterproof and they've got like a very different fabric surface to my existing ones which were definitely not waterproof so although these although these I don't think have the actual plastic membrane inside which says they're waterproof they definitely look like they're going to be better than the ones I've got at the moment and certainly without the soles falling off of them so fingers crossed we're going to be okay Right, we are now at Saddleworth. And I can see signs for Upper Mill and Huddersfield. And we have nine minutes to go and 4.2 miles. We're going to be there just before quarter past eight. That's a good early start. Oh, there's a train. I'd love to live in one of these little isolated cottages out here. They look so nice. And they've got lovely gardens. Little blocks of three or four cottages. Oh, get out the road, birds. Good grief. There's not much in these towns. They are really working towns. They have, they're not tourist towns. They have shops for people that live there, like the pub and the co-op and bits like that. If you were hiking through you would find somewhere for lunch but um, it's not a place to come and hang out for the day the commie upper mill I love the pub names around here I've been past the billy goat <laughs> the billy goat I love that and that was called the commie signs for Delft Dobcross Diggle and Huddersfield. Diggle, I love that word, that makes me laugh.
and have arrived. That in front of you, see there's the main road there where the cars have just gone. Behind that, you can see that track, that's where I'm going. So behind me to the right is the trail that I did last time. And where that car is now driving up, that's where I'm heading. Right, time to get organised. Okay, so here I am. I'm ready to go. Let's get walking. This bit of the route is clearly a bit of a starting point for people. It's busy. Now there are all sorts of routes you can take here. I'm going to stick to the main one. So there are little offshoots all over the place. I'm going to stick to the main route. Weird how this side feels. Far more touristy. But look at that view. Had a lot of rain lately, as you can tell. <laughs> Yay for new boots, which I may have to tighten actually. Give me a sec, I need to tighten these boots. Right, let's go again. Boots are tightened. I've had to lose my hoodie layer already. It's warm. I remember to bring the binoculars today in the hope that I will get to in the hope that I will get to these reservoirs but I've had to take them out of the case because I've got my trainers in the bottom of my rucksack just in case these new walking boots don't work out. It doesn't leave a lot of room for anything else. I've got snacks and water. But I feel like I'm travelling too heavy. fun little mosses and lichens and things. You 
can see those. The clarity of my screen is dreadful today because it's really bright. So I'm just kind of pointing in the right direction. And hoping that I'm actually shooting in front of me properly. So which one do I want, is the question. I think I'm supposed to go down this one, not up that one. Let's have a look and see. Okay, so yeah, I'm turning right. This main Pennine Way is showing like a road, but the trail shows up here. I am heading first for Stand Edge Trig Point, which I think is one of those little cairns. So, this is the way everyone else was going. And I think if I went on that other road, it would take me onto the main Huddersfield Road, and I do not want to be on the road. dog walkers up here and none of the dogs are on leads even though the signs say you must keep your dog on a short lead I haven't seen any sheep <sighs> I'm not feeling very fit today I have to say this view though. park down there. This view is amazing. That was a 360, right.
feel very in the zone today. I don't know why. My brain feels very cluttered and busy. Hopefully as I walk, that will change. <clears throat> I feel dehydrated and unfit and busy in my mind. I'm going to have to stop and dig out my water in a minute. Decompress a bit. This feels like I'm hiking in a completely different area. It's really weird. some water. Get going again. Oh dear.
This looks like it might be a trig point. I presume that might be what a trig point is then. Look at that view. Right, let's keep going. So I just double checked on my Google Maps and that was the trig point. I need to look up what they're all about actually. I've never got to one before, I've always missed them on my routes. Um, so I'll put some information up on the screen. Something to do with the ordnance. behind me in the distance. And hopefully at some point in the distance, on my left, 
I'm going to see two reservoirs, not those ones, they're different, I think, yeah, too close, yeah, somewhere up in the distance, on the left, eventually, I will see two reservoirs, I think, and the main road, and that will give me an idea of how far it is to my end point, which is the, uh, it's Dowroot Reservoir, and I think it's called New Year Reservoir, or something like that. Uh, here come the three people with their one million dogs. I'll just stop recording in a minute. side of the fence. <clears throat> there was a little stile back on the right there, so I suppose... Oh my god, there are dogs out everywhere. I'm presuming there are no sheep up here. Because their dogs are like, wandering off in all directions. But everyone seems to be doing it, which just seems a bit, I don't know, I'd be really concerned about sheep and other wild animals, but I'm not a dog owner. I don't think I'd really want to be walking places like this with a dog, because you've got to keep them on the lead. It kind of, I don't know, ruins the whole thing when you're having to keep an eye on another animal and be responsible for something else. <laughs> Just walking and not getting lost in the process is enough of a challenge for me. I've had pets in the past, but I really don't want the responsibility and the expense that goes with it anymore. I've always ended up in really horrible situations where I've had to rehome my pets because I've been forced into different living arrangements because I've never had my own home. Renting is difficult and it's always been difficult trying to move with animals so it's just easier not to bother and frankly with the way my budget has been for the last six or seven years it wouldn't have worked anyway.
tripping over. What's the matter with me? Another quick look at the map while I'm walking, just to see how I am on my location. You look at these maps and you think you have miles and miles and miles to go. And then before you know it, your next marker point is in front of you. I'm warming to this route. Um, the scenery is spectacular, but it's very different to the other side, where you're not looking down on villages and farms. It's, it feels busier. But not close by. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly look at my map. Just double check where I am. Right, as I thought, I have gone further than I thought. So I'm closer to my turn off point than I realised. Um, but I'm hoping that the turn off point is reasonably obvious. It looks like it should be because it's marked on the on the map for Google Maps. So I should see it, it should be a left fork.
a very defined route. <laughs> this feels like at some point it may once have been almost like a Roman Roman road, but it looks very well defined. But I know the Pennine Way has been here for a while and a lot of it is based around the Roman roads. The route from north to south as far as Hadrian's Wall, which I'd love to walk. See, I'd love to be able to walk the entire length of the Pennine Trail over a period of days and do a similar thing with Hadrian's Wall. But I do not have the skills to do that. I am not a camper. And I think it takes about 17 days to walk the whole Pennine Trail from, I think it's Edale, up to wherever it ends. And I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> so, I'm not going to be doing that. And I don't think my, my fitness levels would cope. I know that my feet definitely wouldn't cope. Gosh, it's very damp up here. All these pools of water feeding the insects and the bird life. I don't really know if there are any animals living up here. I guess there must be voles and things living up here, but I can't say I've seen any real evidence of them. getting to see much of the scenery at the moment because I'm looking where I walk. This is, it's not a hard trail, but it's very rocky. You need to keep an eye on where you're walking. So hopefully the camera is doing its thing for me. Because I can't see a thing. I love these little cairns that spring up everywhere. They all make funny little towers. It's a lot cooler up here, but it's not freezing cold. So, if nothing else, it's good for your energy levels because I'm not roasting hot. Right, here seems to be a fork and it's a defined fork. Let's have a look at the signage because this looks ominous. So, Pennine Way there, Oldham Way there, to stop and have a look I think. So I am taking the Oldham way, not the Pennine way, and it's a good job I did that other map and drew in the off-road route because the Google Maps is very clear. And this just gives me some 
definition as to the path I need. I mean, this looks like a well-defined path either way. So the, the hikers behind me have taken the other route, the Pennine Way. I mean, the further round I walk, the more I think that those two reservoirs there are mine, but they don't look quite the right shape. And there should be the big old Huddersfield Road running right in front of it, which it isn't. But my hope is that there is a defined path down to the reservoirs I'm looking for. There should be, it looks like a path on the satellite map, but you never tell. Now, had I turned right at that last junction and followed the Pennine Way, I would basically end up at um, the other car park. Ooh, this is mushy. And When I next come out and hike, I will be driving to that car park and doing a stretch there. Wow, this is very peaty. Thank God for my new walking boots. Otherwise my feet will be soaking by now. And they're getting a good, a good dowsing in peaty ground, that's for sure. Whew. Okay, this is looking interesting. Hmm. Now I'm feeling unsure. I mean, it's a path. It's definitely a defined path. But there's one there and one there. I need to look at my map again. I feel like I need to stick to the route on the right. I feel like I should still be going in a straight line according to both my maps. I mean, this is a defined route. There are mountain bike tracks and people tracks. So this is, oh look, we're in the same place anyway. This is clearly a used route. And you can see that it is a path. So I'm just gonna carry on. If I get unsure at any point, I'll just turn around and carry on with the Pennine Way and head up to the car park. But I was really hoping to take this. This doesn't look like the sort of path you could get lost on. Not like that last one. <laughs> I say that, this, I don't know. There are lots of tracks here though, so people are obviously doing this trail. It's all over the place, isn't it? You wouldn't want to do this in bad weather, that's for sure. I mean, it's called the Oldham Way. It's a trail, right? If it didn't have a name and a signpost on it, you wouldn't be able to do it. But 
does it go down there? Sometimes the signposts are really lacking in some of these places. No wonder people get lost. This looked so obvious on the map. <clears throat> and now it only looks half obvious. Although it's clearly been walked. Or is it supposed to go down there? This feels like a path though. Hmm. I'm looking for my marker points, which are the main road. And once I get up over this ridge, I should see it. And at least Google Maps are still giving me approximate pointers as to where I am, so I can tell roughly on the landscape where I am. Worst ways, I just head for the Huddersfield Road and walk back along that. It shouldn't be possible to get too lost. I'm not that in the middle of nowhere. So look at all these bike tracks. People are clearly using this trail. It's just a little bit haphazard. And a bit boggy. I want to get up over this ridge and just survey what's around me. If I can see the road and I can see the reservoir, then I know I'm in the right place. Boots are going to need a good clean when I get back. At least they're getting a proper test run. See, look. This is an actual track. Those marker points are really important. And I think they need to put more of those up here. Is it that bit or that bit? I don't know. It's very all over the place, see? That doesn't tell me which side I need to be on. It's very confusing. But at least I feel like I'm less lost now. Now is that the track or did it go up there? Oh, there's a track down there, I can see that. Let's keep heading this way then. At least there is something defined to follow. This is why I try and research as much as possible and take Google Map snapshots with notes if I need to and satellite view. Because sometimes, in fact very often, when you're walking like this, satellite view and Google Maps is better than Google Maps because you can see the lines where the tracks run that you can't see on Google Maps because you're relying on Google to have shown you the path. And they don't show you the ones that go off piece like this. It'll take me so far along the route and then it just stops. I see dog footprints. So there are clearly people here. Oh my God, it's so mushy. I'm so pleased I didn't wear my other boots. And I'll tell you what, I'd have ruined my trainers by now. 
This is very mushy though. At least I can go around it. We don't mind a bit of water, we can cope with that. Questions do I fancy walking back along this way? I don't know. It's weird because the tracks. There are places where the tracks split into two and then they come back together, so it gets a bit confusing as to which way you're supposed to go. And you need to keep looking up and out to make sure that you're plotting the route. This is very peaty. I just don't want to sink up to my middle in it. I don't want a bit of peat and mud. I guess we have had a lot of rain lately, which is why it's so damp at the moment. It was raining up until, I think it was Tuesday evening. So Wednesday was nice, today is nice, so it's no wonder it's wet. I bet the mountain bikers are having fun though. Because this is, feels like really tricky terrain to me. Oh, what am I doing? Well, the civilization down there, so, which I think actually is the direction that I am going to be heading in. <sighs> if I don't feel confident coming back this way, hopefully I can do the main road, although whether there is anywhere to walk, I don't know. seeing bits of sawdust. I wonder if that's people laying marker points. <laughs> Handy if they are. That's the second one of those I've seen. Well, I feel confident about this route. Oh look, there's another marker point up ahead. I feel confident about this. This is not an easy route to miss. As long as you stick to it, you should be okay. I've been hiking an hour, so I shouldn't be that far off. And I think I've done about two miles. Oh, it's windy up here. Well, I wanted to be on my own. <laughs> you can't get more on your own than this. <laughs> Not in the UK. I hope that's a dog. That's a big dog. <laughs> I don't think they have any wolves up here. There's another marker point. We're still good. That's very reassuring. <laughs> Once I get up over this brow, I should hopefully be able to get a better idea of 
what the hell I'm doing. I can hear curlews, I don't know if you can hear them. me. It's all right, mate. I'm not going to hurt you. I think it's annoyed at my presence. I'm not going to hurt you, mate. That is about as close up as I think as I'm going to get to a curlew on these trips. They are not people friendly. Oh god, the track's dividing up again. I wish it wouldn't do this. It's like, oh, well, which one do I take? Do I take that one? Or do I take that one? I think I can see a cairn in front. Let's take that one. Because I can't see any other markers. Ah, I see a road in front, just on the brow of the hill. Oh, there's our curly you again. It's very unhappy about me. He's circling me. I hope you can see him. I think it's too late for them to be nesting now. But they may have fledgling chicks which are still hanging around. It's lovely to see them up that close. We should be alright, this is a well walked track so I don't think I'm going to be causing them any major problems. I'm sticking to the allowed routes. There's a can. There's the reservoir. Oh, thank goodness. You have no idea how relieved I am to see that. This is easier than I thought then. Ah, you see, worrying over nothing. Look at that. Now, I have a, a very short and not terribly exciting history lesson about this whole area. As a can. Good marker point. And there are the reservoirs that I want to get to. So, my small and very uninteresting to some history lesson is that this whole area, well, actually, it's almost like a family connection as well. This whole area 
was part of the lands of the Baron of Rochdale. And one of the Barons of Rochdale was Lord George Gordon Noel Byron. And if you've looked at any of my posts or my website about my book, you may know that my great 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 grandfather, known as Tita Falsieri, which is also what my business is named after because it's such an unusual name, um, he worked for Lord Byron. Now Byron left the UK for good in 1818 after <laughs> lots of scandal and he basically travelled through Europe ended up in Venice that's where he met my ancestor who was a gondolier and then became his uh, or Byron became Byron's they often call him a courier but really he was more described as his bodyguard because he was this huge chap with a long black beard. Think of Brian Blessed and you've got him almost to a T. And he remained in Byron's service through the rest of his life until Byron died in Greece in Missolonghi in 1824, fighting for the Greek cause, but actually died of a fever, as so many people did back then. And then uh, Tita came back to the UK with Byron, the rest of Byron's household as it was then when he was abroad, and accompanied the body back for its burial in Nottinghamshire in the town, or probably then village, of Hucknall Torcard. And then he stayed in the UK for a year or so, working for one of Byron's friends, whose name was John Cam Hobhouse, and they travelled around the country and weirdly ended up in places where I went as a child, so he went to Ambleside and me and my family used to do a lot of Lakeland holidays and Ambleside was one of the places we went to consistently. <laughs> so it's so strange. Anyway, so that's how I end up being connected to an Italian because he eventually he did go back to Greece and continue to fight in the Greek War of Independence and then eventually ended up back here in the UK. He became temporarily sort of valet to Benjamin Disraeli, who was then an author, and they went on the Grand Tour and went to, you know, they, they met in, in uh, they met in Malta and he acted as valet to Disraeli for a while and then Disraeli had to go home to the UK because his travelling companion died. His travelling companion was engaged to his sister and died so he went back and left Tita with one of his other companions acting as his valet. And then eventually that other companion eventually ended up back in the UK and Tita came with him and I think this was in end of 1831 and then back in the UK Tita found himself without work the person he had come back with didn't need his work his services anymore so he hunted out Disraeli and asked if we could give him a job he was that bold <laughs> and he did he found him a job working for his parents at their house which was Bradenham Manor in 
uh, a village called Bradenham near High Wycombe in Buckinghamshire and he spent many years there working as like the valet, the doorkeeper, getting into trouble. He was a very spirited Italian in a very rural British village. It didn't always go down well. And while he worked at that house is where he met his future wife, who was my ancestor, Sarah Harvey, who came from Lincolnshire. It was the Lincolnshire-Leicestershire border, actually. The borders have changed since she was living there. And the rest is kind of history. But if you want to read the whole story, you have to buy my book. <laughs> Links in the show notes below. See, shameless plug. I'm not very good at marketing myself. I'm not very good at selling myself. And this year is the first time I've ever properly actively marketed my book through through this channel, like through talking about the book and all that sort of thing. And my sales have been, they're not enormous, but they are considerably higher than they have been in previous years. If you take the sales as book by book. So it does work, but I'm doing it in a more natural way. You know, I'm not making a sales pitch. I'm just telling you about the story and about my family. But it is, it is a very interesting tale because here is a man who traveled through great swathes of the world. He traveled as far as Jamaica and he did the Grand Tour more than once. He fought in the Greek War of Independence and they didn't have trains or cars or bicycles. They had horses and boats. And the fact that he survived all of that <laughs> and never got ill, really, and didn't die like most people, or like a lot of people did, dying from various fevers. It was very easy to drop dead of a fever back then. And he seems to have survived it all. Maybe I have inherited his strong immune system because I never seem to get ill. Whoops. See, not looking where I'm going. Right. Okay, so now I know that the reservoirs are up to the right and I know that the path bears round to the left and picks up the Pennine Way again. Another part of it. So this path at some point will start to become more solid. But this looks pretty good. I presume I have to go through that fence and follow that wall. But I can't see what the signs say from here, so we'll, we'll have a look. I'm going to stop at this junction for some water. When I get to the other end, I'm going to have some of my snack. But I'm going to try and pace myself because I don't have anything else in the car. I did bring a a sweet drink with me, it's something I've had in my stores for a long time and not used. It's one of those fruit shoot things, but I thought for a sugar hit, um, and because it's just there and it needs using up, I thought I'd bring it. So I might have a dash of that with my water when I stop here. But I'm feeling pretty chipper. Touch wood, my boots are feeling pretty good actually. There's no rubbing. There's a little tight spot on the right. But I could solve that by just loosening the laces a little bit because it's right at the top where the, the ankle support is. Well, this looks mighty fine to me. 
Right, I'm going to stop here. And work out if I go that way, or if I go this way. So I was going to take this right route, which will get me to where I want to go, but it means I have to walk a section of the Huddersfield Road, and I don't know how safe that is. This route, down the side of the wall, is longer, but looks like it keeps me off the main drag. So I'm going to stick with this one. because this does say it's the olden way. That's where we've come from. Looks like the middle of nowhere, doesn't it? And this is where we're going. So let's follow this route. This will curve us round to the left more but then it looks like I don't know whether it's an actual road that I have to follow but it's a lane not a big old Huddersfield A road I don't mind I mean it's still not even 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm almost at my end point Eee, that's soggy. Let's uh, do what everyone else has done. Ooh, I'm not a mountain climber. I have almost no sense of balance, which is why I have to be careful, because spraining an ankle out here would be very bad news. Because as always, I've not told anyone I'm here, because I'm an idiot. Let's try not to fall. There we go. Good walking boots. Oh, this is nice. Got to love a well-made stone wall. See from here. Oh yeah, look at that view. Oh look at that. feel fairly sure that I'm going to breach my five mile limit today but depending on the route like this hasn't been as difficult as the previous ones, it's been pretty flat and 
I think I can do more than five miles. So this is not the Pennine Way. I've ended up doing the Pennine Way and the Oldham Way. I quite like the Oldham Way. Very different countryside to my previous walks, but... And I've kind of decluttered now. I felt really all over the place when I first started out, but I feel like I've slowed down a bit now. Somewhere out there. See, that looks like where that path would have gone if I carried on. Oh look, there's the, uh, there's the reservoirs down below. And there's the, you just see the main road. Hmm. Have a look at the map again. Well, there's two reservoirs there. I think I'm okay here. This will bring me out onto the left hand reservoir, which is New Year's Bridge Reservoir. And then hopefully, what I can do is walk around both the reservoirs have a little sit down and then plan what I'm going to do about my route home. See there's, there's the reservoir I'm heading to down there. But it feels like a very circuitous route. I wonder if I should have taken the other one now but The track goes round to the right there. I'm going to end up coming straight down to the reservoir. If I can go that way. I don't want to go straight on there, do I? I want to go right. Let's see what's at the end here. Looks like there's a, like a T-junction. There's a lot of sheep in that field. My first cricket. Which has now stopped. Maybe a milestone? I don't know. Have a look at the map again. So it looks like if I turn right down here and stay on that walled trail, that will bring me down between the two reservoirs, which is where I want to be. So we are still en route.
but I'll end up with the sheep. I'm quite, I'm not nervous about farm animals, but they need a, a strong farmer's hand. And that I ain't got, because they are animals and therefore can be unpredictable. I picked a day to do this and not tomorrow. It's going to be a lot hotter and a lot sunnier tomorrow with the cloud cover, although it's warm because it's windy. The breeze is making a huge difference. Okay, we are going to come into contact with sheep by the looks of it. are pretty grown up so hopefully they won't be feeling too territorial. Oh look there's an old mounting stone. I assume that's what it is. So that you can get on your horse. Right so Pennine Pennine Bridleway Python Reservoir. There is no sign, oh there we are, sign to the right, Oldham Way, Pennine Bridleway, Castle Shore, to the left, that'll take you down to uh, Castle Shore Reservoir, which is the first reservoir I saw, those sheep have just lost their fleeces, look at them, <laughs> they look naked, naked sheep. Uh, and yes, another sign that says GM Ringway, which was what I was following. So, how the dickens do I open this thing? There we go. Right, and we are heading right. Not making eye contact with the livestock. We don't want to upset anyone. All right, sheeps. Looking unimpressed. And we are going to stick to this road. I think there's a sheep down there. Does that look like a sheep that's making the most of its own grazing space? Can't tell. They will go wherever they jolly well want sheep. As long as they don't get angry with me, I don't mind. But look. It's another one of those sawdust patches. I think someone's been leaving a trail. Which is also reassuring. Definitely a couple of sheep there. Oh look, reservoir. No idea if you can walk around these ones. This could be a massive waste of time. I might end up walking back along the Huddersfield Road anyway. We will find out. Do 
the other car park, which I might have ended up walking to, would be further down or further along the Huddersfield Road. Uh, so I don't think I can get to that from here without going along the road. Look, the sheep's grey. It's all right, sheep. It's all right. Didn't mean to scare you. Thought it was going to run me then. <laughs> At least they haven't got horns, but <laughs> I don't really want to fight with a sheep. I think it would probably win. They were not happy about me being there. be some trail around these reservoirs. If it takes me back up to the other bit of track and then I can hike back along there because that would be different. That means I don't have to do this section again. And then it would be a little bit more of a circular route. think, I well, don't know, no I'm still going to have to do that crazy across the moors section again, but as with all my other excursions I'm not going to record the walk back where I've already done the walk out because it's the same thing in reverse, but of course the other thing that also happens is that Something amazing happens when I'm not recording, like when I saw that red grouse. living up there. Wow. That's what you call getting away from it all. So this is New Year's Bridge Reservoir and then on the other side of the main road see that little Tesco delivery truck on the other side of that is Dowry Reservoir and that was my initial end point for this hike so when I get to the, the reservoirs I'm going to find a place to sit down and have a break, something to eat, maybe get to use my <laughs> my binoculars, not sure. I can see how many miles I've done out, I reckon I've probably done two and a half, let's say I'll have done two and a half. these little climbing stones. I wonder if they were for climbing over the walls. They are rather spectacular. A little house up there.
This walk has gone surprisingly well so far. There were a few rather shady points where I wasn't sure if I was going to get lost, but... It's looking pretty good. I just hope I can walk... down there. Soon find out. Now I'm on an actual road, but it still says the olden way. I had a feeling I would end up on an actual road. Oh, they do trail rides there. Something. Western trail rides. That must be horse trekking. I love a bit of horse trekking. It's very expensive though. All right, we're coming into civilization here. That's uh, interesting. I don't really want to be on roads. I mean, that's where you want to be, isn't it? Oh well. What does that say? It just says public footpath. Good luck finding the path through that. Very overgrown. Interesting. I'd like to live here. Oh, goldfinches. Gosh, there's several little cottages here. Look, can you see them? to live. <coughs> oh, this looks ominous. cows in that field. I don't want to go in there. I'm not 
not sure about that. I don't feel very confident about that. It does. It says it's the Oldham Way link, but it doesn't tell me where to go. I want to be back there. But there are also cows in that field, which makes me nervous. Maybe I should just walk down there. I mean, does that look like I can... It's just... There might be a footpath sign there. Let's give this a trial. I'm worried about the the cows. Cows are very iffy. So I have to keep an eye on the cows. I've been stung by a nettle. That hurts. Ow. Is there a way through there? Absolutely cannot tell. See, this is the problem with the signage. It needs to be properly, like, properly laid out. It's a bit foggy in places, which is fine if you've got, like, big, fancy, expensive... trail maps and apps and all that sort of thing, but if you're like me and you're just some poor idiot who's just trying to find their way around, it's not so easy. See, now I feel like I've gone completely in the wrong direction and I'm not going to get through here now. There's a fence there, a gate there, should I say. And there's a trail down there. But now I'm trapped in a field with a bunch of bloody cows. And no obvious way to get out. Which makes me unhappy. Pick that up then. This is ridiculous. I do not feel like this is good. Or that I have taken a correct route. me not to do it and I did it and now I'm stuck in a field and that gate is open which is not making me happy either Is this the link? I don't 
like there's a little style there. something down there, but this really does not look good. Oh look, there's a link there. See, let's be honest, that is not helpful. So, there's an arrow pointed on there, so maybe this is it. Super duper confusing. I feel like I'm following a cow trail rather than a people trail. Some more signage would be really blooming helpful about now. I'm not coming back this way, blimey. This is ridiculous. Open fence there with a trail. It was going so well. This has not been help very helpful, I have to say. I feel like I should have stuck with the path. This is ridiculous. I feel really lost now. Because this doesn't seem to be where I need to be. I don't see any sign of a route down there. I'm going to get back on there onto the road. I probably should have stayed in the first place. So, I've ended up back on the road. because I can't see where that Oldham Way link ended up. There is no defined pathway. There's that gate down there, but I can't work out how to get there. At least if I'm on the road, at least I know where I am. So I'm just going to have to head down here, bear right, 
and I hope that the Huddersfield Road is not incredibly dangerous to walk on because it was going so well. annoying. <sighs> Wham Lane. I bet this was popular back in the 80s. That cute little house. Oh, look at that. I wonder if that used to be a chapel. It's got a slightly churchy feel to it. Oh, this is lovely. This is Oxhay Lane I've just come down. As you see, Wham Lane. I'm going to end up in all the places I didn't want to be. God, I hope I can walk this. This is going to be a pain in the backside otherwise. Dear Google, please lay out your walking routes better. Dear whoever manages the signposting for walkways, can you please update them? <laughs> It would be really helpful for idiots like me. <laughs> well, at least I know where I am. <laughs> and I'm not trespassing. That's my fear, is I end up in someone's back garden or being charged by a bull or attacked by horses. And I have been attacked by horses in my past. I hope there's a pathway down this road. I don't mind walking it if there's a pathway. It's not ideal but at least it's safe. And at least I can get to the <laughs> reservoirs then and then pick up my route further along. Ah oh dear. Look at where these old gateways used to be. Dear. Please let there be a path. We're supposed to be pedestrian friendly these days. Old style communications. It looks like there's a path on the other side. That's hopeful. <clears throat> Is there one on this side? Oh, I'm going to have to cross this crazy road. Yep, yeah, we're going to have to cross the crazy road. Oh, that's not too bad. Look, there's nobody there. Oh, well, that's better than a poke in the eye, isn't it? As my mum would say. <clears throat> I am in Denshaw. I wasn't planning on coming to Denshaw. But here we are in Denshaw. Hello, Denshaw. 
Oh dear. Right, so I'm going to put you down for a minute because I feel self-conscious now because I'm back in um, civilization and people can see me walking around with a selfie stick. And I'm going to look at my map so that I can work out exactly where I actually need to be. So, here I am on the Huddersfield Road, which is where I didn't want to be. As you can see, there's nowhere to walk. It's not safe. However, what I see before me to the right is a gate. Oh, no public access, brilliant. So, going to have to be a path then, isn't it? If I'm not allowed to walk down there, no public access. So when I got lost and ended up climbing back over that fence and going back onto that um, road, that's where I was up there. So when I was looking down at the hill, this is where I was. So. I don't know what happened to the Oldham, the Oldham link because I can't see any sign of a walkway down the side of that valley which clearly says no public access. So I'm just going to have to do what I can because this is just stupid. What has happened to the Oldham Way link? There's a big old, like, half walkway all the way down there. But there's no way of getting to it. See, that looks like it should be a walk through. But it says no public access. So now I'm going to have to walk on this verge, which is really blooming dangerous. Thank God it's not a ridiculously busy road because this is really stupid. But it is an A road. So, I don't think it's illegal. I'm going to put you down for a moment so I can hike this out and focus on what the hell I'm doing. See you in a minute. So, I'm still on the Huddersfield Road. There's a a curb here, like a grass curb, which look like, looks like it's been walked. So I'm guessing this is how people get from one place to the next on foot. Um, so that's where I was up there. And if you follow that line of stone wall to the bottom, there's a track running from there all the way along here and you can see it running up the side of that wall there. But you can't get to it. So, if I had carried on down the side of that field, I probably would have ended up down there, but the fencing stopped me from doing it. Now, I don't know whether that's because there wasn't a trail there, or whether someone's chosen to fence it off. Because I know that sometimes farmers are just like, well, I don't want people walking through my land. Therefore, you can't. So this is one of the reservoirs. 
No idea if I can actually get down to it. Who knows? It looks like there should be a walkway along there somewhere. But I'm not feeling hopeful about it, that's for sure. This is stupid. No public access. Not at all. Members and day ticket angling only. Ah, oh, but look. There's the trail route. This is the Oldham Way. So this is the trail. And my feet are now starting to hurt. They are a little bit sore in places. I should have guessed that was going to happen. So I've come all the way along there. I mean, all around here it looks like there should be an off route, but you can't get to anything. I hope there's a walk through there. I don't want to go down there. That sounds like turns. It looks like turn. Oh no, it's nice to catch us, sorry. Idiot. Not sure how I feel about this. I hope there's a route on the left, because otherwise I'm screwed. I also want to stop. Well, there's a little arrow on there. That is definitely hopeful. Whew. It can be very hard to plan bits of these routes, because there are certain amounts of it that you can see on maps and things, but the rest of it is down to you taking some risks and um, you know, looking for blogs and stuff like that. And there we are. Look, that's what I wanted. And I'm going to find somewhere to stop just along this little bit of trail. <sighs> so I can eat something and have a drink and... I'll take my boots off for a minute. My feet do hurt a bit. But I am wondering how many miles I've actually walked. Well... Certainly not getting to do much of the reservoirs. <laughs> They're not as fun as the other ones, are they? <sighs> Good to get off that road, though. 
There's a sign on the right which suggests that I might have to go right. is Oldham Way and that says Oldham Way and that says it's been improved for me by the Ramblers volunteers well I'm going to stop here for a minute on this stone I mean that looks like a, a doable trail of sorts But I'd like to stop for some food. I sit down because I haven't sat down since whenever I sat down last. Oh. I'm tired, but I'm not perilously tired. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of bird life on this reservoir and I don't think I'm even going to get to the other reservoir although there is a trail down there Hmm Gonna eat some food, have a drink and come back to you So I'm trying to work out where to go next whether just to follow the olden way back which will basically take me the whole of the route that I've just done, apart from that awful road stage, or follow the reservoirs round and see if there is another bit of trail further round. I could walk to the next car park, which will give me the Pennine Trail all the way back to the car, but I don't know if that means I have to walk all the way down the Huddersfield Road. If I could do that, that would be a different route. I might walk this section round to the Dowry Reservoir and just see what's there. Because this says it's the Oldham Way, but there may be other off-road tracks that way which will get me to where I want to be as well. And there is a trail that goes along here so I'm just going to have a look and just see what I've got. I was meant to say that I checked my little pedometer thing and I've actually done almost five miles so I've really messed up today. I'm going to be uh, knackered by the time I get home because this is going to turn into a 10 mile hike and and I'm not entirely sure yet what way I'm going home. And my feet definitely hurt a little bit, but I think they probably would have done by now anyway. just an animal track. I have no idea. This feels like it's just been worn by the animals. I 
I don't think this is a people track. I don't think I'm going to get my way around these reservoirs. I should have stuck to the Pennine Trail. Never mind. I don't feel like trying to find my way across the Huddersfield Road. And I don't see a way around there. So I'm going to go back to where that arrow was. And I'm just going to stick to the route. I'm not sure what the time is, but I think it's getting on for 12-ish. Which means I've been out for a good few hours now, which is much longer than normal. Hey ho. Well, we wanted a good hike today and we sure got one. That stone looks like a bit of a house. Got some curved bits on it. I wish I could sit here for hours, but <laughs> it's already lunchtime and I don't want to be getting home at crazy late. So, Well, we've certainly done a lot of route today, so far. Boy, am I going to hurt in the morning. <laughs> Let's follow this route, which is the Oldham Way, and get ourselves back on a, a safe route. I think I'm going to have to do that whole crazy route over the moors again. Oh well. I'm going to check my camera. I don't know how much battery I've got left. Okay, I've still got almost half my battery, so not doing bad. Mobile phone batteries last forever when you don't have apps and stuff on them. This very old camera of mine lasts a lot longer than my four years younger one, which has all the stuff on it and which I only use for um, maps when I'm out doing this because I don't want to waste the battery because if I run out of battery and have no maps I could run into all sorts of problems oh, uphill feels hard now and the sun's come out we don't want that go away sun think if I stay here I'm going to end up where I thought about turning left or uh, right and ended up going straight on I should have taken that turning never mind choices were made I don't think many people walk the Oldham way. 
think everyone prefers to stick to the Pennine Way. That's the famous one. But this seems fairly agreeable. Someone's obviously walked to it because you can see where the grass is down. Well, there is a sign up there which is making me feel hopeful. It's really annoying when you get those two forks in the path and they both look doable and then you realise you probably should have taken the other one. Oh, it's a bit muddy through here, isn't it? Ooh, slushy. <laughs> my boots. Look at my lovely new boots. <laughs> we are muddy. Well, it's still on the right route anyway, because there's the arrow. <sighs> there's the arrow, and a very old looking sign with no information on it, but that's where we've come from. Well, I wanted to get away from everything, and I have. I think that's the way I walked in. So I've hardly cut off any of the route, really. I've got to do all that hill again with that weird route. I'm going to be absolutely knackered by the time I get back. There's the Dowry Reservoir that I never got to. You get to that point where it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> this is it. Whew. This has a not ridiculously steep up, up hill to it, uphill gradient to it, but you probably can't tell. But it's tiring when you're already knackered. It's mostly annoying because I've got to do the same route in reverse and I hate doing that. But you can't do round trips on these roads. These trails are straight one end to the next. Oh wow. I think that might be a harrier up there. Can you see it? Nice. Oh, that's good. I've seen that one anyway. So, oh, there's a sheep up there. Where the hell am I? Oh, I'm back here. 
I know where I am. Hey sheep! So this is where I came through and joined the sheep. So I guess I'm going back up the other way. I saw. <sighs> so I've done a little bit of a circle, but not a massive circle. Oh. read that. Can you read that? It says PB, oh, PBW the Edith Boone Way. That's that step that I thought was for mountain horses. Interesting. I don't know what happens if you go down that way. I don't know what was going on with that. I should have taken the right turn. Or did I? No, I did. I did go that way. And I've come across country. Um, I don't know where that goes. Probably some farmer's yard. I'll have a look on the map at some point. So I'm now back on known route. So I'm going to put you down for a bit, so that I can stride out and drink some water at the same time. And I will catch up with you further down the road. So this is where I've just come down from. These are the signs I followed, which told me to go this way. And remember I started to walk this way and then came back. Take this way. That will bring you out, I think, down in between the two reservoirs and won't take you off route and down the Huddersfield Road. I am not going now. <laughs> I've learnt a lesson. I'm not doing it. I'm just going to go straight back the way I cam came, back over the moorlands joy. I'm not looking forward to that. Um, hey ho. done it. I've made it back to the junction with the Oldham Way and the Pennine Way. That was a killer. I'm glad I've done it. I wouldn't do it again. Well, maybe I would. There's Castle Shore Reservoir, which I saw on the way in. And now I have to broach this the last of the Pennine Way back to the car. I don't feel exhausted and I think a lot of that is to do with it's cool up here, it's windy, it's not really hot. So I don't feel absolutely knackered. 
but I'm going to really feel this later on when I've been home for an hour or so and everything starts to seize up. So I'm going to now walk this last stretch back to the car. Um, see you at the other end again. Back at the trig point. Stand edge trig point. Which means I'm nearly back. Ish. <laughs> Just back there, I saw the three ladies walking the multiple dogs from this morning. I think it's a different set of dogs. There were at least 15 dogs. They must work for a, uh, either a, a dog training thing or they must be professional dog walkers. It may be that they run a, a kennels. All sorts of dogs, like little things with tiny legs who I think must have really struggled up on these hills and uh, we said hello and they said we saw you earlier I said yeah I said I got a little bit lost <laughs> my app is telling me that I've done I think it was about eight miles so far Definitely getting close to home. Very windy up here, but I swear it's so cool, it's lovely. It's helping me keep up my energy levels because I'm not being exhausted by heat. Very little sun today, which has been an absolute godsend because if it had turned really hot and sunny, I would have failed miserably. And that's why I've come out today rather than tomorrow. But it's going to be a lot hotter. Oh. <laughs> it's seriously windy up here. Can you tell? I wonder what it sounds like. Because my little wind muffler piece of sponge has been absolutely indispensable on these walks. show you the sunny valley. See, it's sunny down there. Oh look, some belted galloways down there. And there's the, the Castle Shore Reservoir there. Right. I'm going to stride out for my last stretch, feeling hopeful, nearly back. I dread to think what the state of my feet look like. I think I probably have at least three blisters. Had I stopped at five miles, I, my feet wouldn't be feeling like this. It was kind of that five mile mark when I suddenly thought, oh dear, I've overdone it today. My feet are not designed for this kind of walking. They're not tough enough, but we're, we're doing it and we've almost done it. If you've ever been out on a day trip and just been really exhausted and wanted to get home or you've got lost and then all of a sudden in the distance you've seen your car and you've been like, oh God, I'm not lost. That's how I feel. In the distance there, I can see my car. On the right hand side, the silver car is mine. And I'm so relieved <laughs> to be almost back. Because that was a long, long hike. Heavens above. <laughs> I feel like if I don't get out to hike next week, I'll have made up for it already. Oh dear. <laughs> mm. 
Nearly there. Nearly there. <laughs> I did it. I'm back. I'm on my other phone because my traveling phone is down to 8% on the battery. I took quite a lot of stills on the way back as well because I never seem to take still shots. Um, yeah, I'm back. I don't feel that bad actually. I feel quite warm now. The car's really warm. Um, 8.56 miles I did according to my little app which is probably about right. I've had a wash and I've eaten the rest of my food and had some more water. I don't feel that bad actually. It, the time is quarter to two. So I did that almost nine miles in not an enormously longer distance than uh, a time the last time, because normally I think I get to these car parks about half eight, nine o'clock. And I got back here probably about 20 minutes ago or so. Go on, fly. And... So I don't think it's taken me that long, actually. But it feels good. It all feels really good. Oh, there's the dog walkers. There's the three ladies with their 50 million dogs. Well, they must, there must be a nice circular route here because they've come in from a different way. I know which way they've gone. Oh my God, so many dogs. I don't know if you can see this. I'll try and show you this. I don't know if you can see them all. Multiples of dogs, look at all the dogs. I saw these ladies first thing. They have a lot of dogs. And I'm going to go via Sainsbury's because I don't think I can face walk into Sainsbury's tomorrow morning. My feet are going to need a major rest. And I have a lot of work to do tomorrow. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Time to head home. I think I'm going to feel this later. I don't feel too bad at the moment, but I think later on I'm really going to feel this. It's been a good day though. Really enjoyed it. I hope you like... Um, whatever it is finally makes it to YouTube I'll put a route map I'll draw a proper route map of where I actually went including all the bits where I went wrong um, give you an idea of what happened <laughs> it's been a good exploration though. I've really enjoyed it catch you later